Last time we saw a set of greater cardinality than the set of natural numbers. Now we're going to see that for any set of any cardinality, there's a set of greater cardinality than that set. And that set is the power set of the set. And so what we're going to do is we're going to show that for any uh, set A, the power set of A has a greater cardinality than A. And we're going to do this by contradiction, by showing that there is no function f that is an injection from A to the power set of A. And so uh, to do this contradiction, we're going to first assume that the function f exists. And we're going to use this function f to create a, a set B, a subset of A, um, defined by B is equal to the set of all x in A, such that x is not in f of x. And so this is a little confusing to start with. It's important to remember that our function f takes elements of A to elements of the power set of A, and elements of the power set of A are subsets of A. So asking whether x is in f of x is asking whether x is in the subset of a that is mapped to by the function f. And so what we get is a set b, which is also a subset of a, because it's the set of all x and a that then satisfy this condition. And so since f is an injection, we know that there exists a y such that f of y is equal to b, because b is a subset of a, and that means that it is an element of the power set of a, and so our function f must inject onto it for some element, and we're going to call that element y. And so now the question is, is y an element of b? And this is how we're going to get our contradiction. So we're going to start by assuming that y is, in fact, an element of b. And then that means that y is an element of f of y, because b is f of y. And that means that y is not an element of b, because uh, if you look at the definition of what b is, uh, y being an element of f of y is the opposite of y not being an element of f of y, which is the condition that y would have to satisfy if it was going to be in b. So um, we reach a contradiction here because we started by saying that y was in b, and then we got that y was not in b. So maybe the correct assumption is that y is not an element of b. But we're going to get a contradiction here too nearly the same way, because if y is not an element of b, then y is not an element of f of y. But then, now it satisfies the definition of what it needs to have to be an element of b, and so that means that y is an element of b. So, y is either uh, if it's in B, then it's not in B. If it's not in B, then it is in B. And so this is a contradiction for all the way back to the first assumption we made, which was that F existed at all. 